everyone needs people who support and believe in them. Growing up in the projects as the youngest of six children in a single parent household, the Elliott Chelsea houses were sometimes a struggle of their very own. Compared to a kid growing up in the suburbs, I had to grow up faster. For example, I didn't know what it was like to receive an allowance. I didn't know what it was like to not have to worry about money during the holidays. I didn't know what it was like to have my own room. I didn't know that it wasn't normal for your family members to come pick you up out of the recreation center and take you home because they knew that there would be a shootout in your neighborhood. I didn't always know where my next meal would come from. I didn't know what the world was like beyond the two blocks of the projects. Ta-Nehisi Coates said it best in Between the World and Me. Why was life so different out there? In that other world, past the asteroids? What did the people whose images were once beamed from the TV into my living room have that I did not? But it was one other thing that I also didn't know. I didn't know that one day I would go to college. Everyone needs people who support and believe in them. I, wouldn't have, I would not have survived my adolescence if there wasn't for my support system, like the Hudson Guild. At age 14, I began working. A kid my age, of course, you know, you'd want what? Like a, a cell phone, sneakers, some clothes, right? Working gave me a sense of independence. However, sometime, at the same time, uh, friends and family members fell victim to the incarceration system and some to acts of violence, like my father. But I wasn't alone. You see, a bunch of kids that I grew up with also lost their fathers. The absence of our fathers left our mothers to raise us off one income, and sometimes no income. My first job was at the community center, the Hudson Guild. I was working there with senior citizens. My fear of jail and violence drove me to spending more time at work and school than at home. Throughout my life, what motivated me most was the fear that I would end up like so many others from my neighborhood. I believed that education would open doors for me. My journey in education, however, was the road to success paved with failure. I remember months before my eighth grade graduation, uh, I had received news that I hadn't even been accepted into a high school. What were the things that I did not have that I actually needed to get into a good high school? I didn't have advocates. I didn't have academic preparation for standardized tests. I didn't have the awareness that there were even standardized tests that I needed to take. I didn't have the means to travel to schools to visit. And I didn't have another person to take me to those schools. I was alone. In fact, I went to my high school interview alone. And I didn't have money, so private school was completely out of the question. After spending hours in tears, I accepted the reality. Even after gaining acceptance into a school during the supplementary round, when the Hudson Guild stepped in and served as my advocate, and Angela Tiskes helped me apply, I still had a feeling, a feeling that I was unworthy. With every obstacle, I felt that I did not have what it took to succeed. 
Just because I was in a high school, it didn't mean that I was in a high school that supported and believed in me. I had heard about the now defunct Rice High School. It's a Catholic school. Well, it was a Catholic school in Harlem. Uh, they had a 99% graduation rate. While coming up with a plan on how I could attend this out of reach private school, my biggest worry wasn't, okay, uh, how can I do well on the uh, admissions test? I knew I could do that. I knew I was smart enough. My biggest worry wasn't, um, how can I pay for my application fee? I could easily find someone who could front me 50 bucks. My biggest worry was how would I pay tuition if I were to gain acceptance into this, into this school? Clearly, financial barriers showed me that not everyone is born with equal opportunity. Let me tell you guys about someone. My oldest sister, Rondrea. At 16, she left home to work. There, she began working and paying her own bills to gain independence. This was at a time when minimum wage was only 5 15 an hour. My sister was the only working member of my family at this point. And although she'd been paying her own bills at the time, she offered to pay my tuition if I maintained a B average or better. My sister's always been an inspiration to me. She always demonstrated that education was worth more than any dollar amount. And she did that by investing in me. She invested in me and she invested in my education. Everyone needs people who support and believe in them. So I went to Rice. Rice High School made a big, big difference for me. It taught me how to dress professionally. Rice High School taught me well enough to make honor roll every single semester. Rice High School taught me the academic skills to be placed in all AP courses and to ace calculus and physics. I was taught how to make the basketball team as well as win the city championship. I was taught about Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle. I was taught the feeling of belonging and the pride that my teachers instilled in me. I was taught about my own worth by one of my professors, Mr. Eugene Ubuiki. He now serves as my mentor. I was taught what it meant to embody what a rice man is. Responsibility, integrity, courage, and empowerment. And I was taught this in a poem that we would recite every single day. I am somebody. Designed for greatness, engineered for success. I have a winner inside of me. His name is Jesus. And because he died for me, I am worthy. So stay up. I said stay up. And don't let nothing bring you down. But no one in my family had ever experienced college. This was going to be completely different. I couldn't go to my mother for help. I couldn't go to my sisters for help with my applications. So I went to Hudson Gill for help with my applications and scholarships. I saw what my friends were doing at the time. And even a few of, professor, of the professors at Rice helped me look for scholarships. But mostly, I was out there on a limb. And at the end, I was even lucky to get into Virginia State University. Aside from the massive cultural changes between the North and the South, I found myself lacking confidence academically. I was in a new level in education 
where only few people in my life have ever been. As a first generation college student, I learned so many things that I couldn't have had the opportunity to right here in Elliott Chelsea Projects. When I went to college and moved to Virginia, it was the first time I had ever left the tri-state area for an extended amount of time. This combination of feelings and emotions led to a lot of discomfort without the shelter of family and friends. But in that discomfort, I learned something. I learned that discomfort leads to growth. I had to work twice as hard to achieve goals that others considered easy. Why? Because I didn't have the financial or the psychological security. I knew I couldn't afford to make a mistake. I was constantly afraid of being asked to leave this place that people back home only dreamt of being. Eventually, through hard work, I reached a point where I could actually feel confident in my new environment. Everyone needs people who support and believe in them. Going back home to Chelsea, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's still a different world. In fact, as a, as a musician, I often talk about this different world. I am the hustle. But hustling ain't about the drugs they cook. It's for the student hustling for their books. 500 mixtapes sold just to get my math lab. But A&Rs couldn't grasp that. But every hood respects this. This is for my people on welfare. Hustling music because they're desperate. But desperation isn't a weakness. To keep it real with my culture, as a people, we need this. Someone to show you you can be somebody. Support each other. We all need somebody. My confidence is always challenged when I return to New York City, to the projects, to friends that I grew up with who were progressing at a different rate than I was. And this, is, this, this uh, progression has caused so many breaks in relationships and friendships. What had happened to my old support system? People were stagnant. People felt since I was at a university, I was no longer the same person that grew up right here in Chelsea. People felt because I didn't want to hang out and party. They assumed that I thought that I was better than them. Last year, I released my iTunes single, Radio, about people who strive to obtain their goals even without resources and support. I have my own clothing line. It's called Hood Brothers. Hood is an acronym. It stands for Hustle Out of Desperation. Both my music and my company are part of this community. I was interested in pursuing my MSW because social work is one of the best ways to advocate for change and to help my community. Once again, I crossed paths with the Hudson Guild. I spoke to Ken Jockers, who's the director there, and he introduced me to my, uh, at the time, future mentor, Guy Vickers. Interestingly enough, Guy Vickers was pursuing his doctorate in social work when he instead decided to work for Tommy Hilfiger. I suddenly felt like success with the, was within reach. Uh, he's also my fraternity brother. The things he's shown me through his leadership makes me know that this is possible. Through the many hours he spends giving back with his involvement in the Elliott Chelsea community, as well as many others, I felt he was someone whom I could aspire to be like. On one of the many trips I came, uh, on one of the many trips back home to the projects, 
there was a moment that I realized that what I was doing was taking a major leap for people like me and people who come from situations like mine. I realized that when a young man who used to live in my building came up to me and he, he told me that I was the man. He said I was the man because I was the only person he knew that could wear a suit and live in the projects. Today, that young man is now my mentee and he looks to me for advice. Everyone needs people who support and believe in them. And now it's my turn to support others. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you.